1 to 4, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 to 4, reading. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being ensamples to the flock. And when the sheep chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Now let's read verses 5 and 6 together also. Verses 5 and 6. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. May God bless the reading of his word. Now let us all turn to God in prayer now. Let us all pray. Our Father in heaven, we bow before you, praising and thanking you for journey mercies to thy house and for every opportunity to study your word. We plead afresh the cleansing and washing in the blood of our Saviour, that this gathering tonight may receive your blessing. And Father, we pray that you help us to understand your word and derive principles to apply in the life of the church. We pray, O oh God, that you will establish your people's convictions in their hearts and build a strong church for thy future use. We ask and pray that you be in the house to feed your children tonight. Grant to us concentration. Help each one of us, Lord, to love your kingdom and want to understand how the church ought to be. We ask and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we continue the last time, from the last time that we studied. Now, must, must pastors and elders always be only men? Is it only for men, this role? And we establish from Scripture, yes. All right, from Scripture, it is clear. Now, um, one of the, maybe I just do a quick revision, just one question. Now, when people say, well, you know this whole idea about women not, um, should, women should not, have authority over men, it was cultural. It was only at that time the church um, of Corinth um, had some problems with women, and it was only for the Corinthian church. So is that argument valid when someone said, no, you know, it is not relevant to our time, this whole thing about men, um, only men should be authority in church, there should not be something relevant today. Now, maybe i start here. All right, uh, Jennifer. Is it a correct understanding? How would you answer such a person? Say again. It's not cultural. All right, how do you prove that it is not cultural? All right, very good. Now, every time God brings this up, God draws men back to the principle of creation. All right? So it cannot be cultural. If it is cultural, then why would God repeatedly say, with respect to this matter, I refer back to creation, where I created man first, then woman, and to show man that God's intention, that man would be head over woman, all right? That is simply God's, God's uh, plan. Now, turn to first, where, where, where can that be found, all right, next person, uh, Janelle? First Timothy. Very good, let's turn to First Timothy chapter 2, First Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, all right, um, verse 13. Now let's read together. But, uh, sorry, verses 12, all right, 12 to um, 13 together. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. It has nothing to do with the church in Corinth at that time. Otherwise, the reason would not be for Adam was first formed, all right? If it's a church, then he will cite problems in the church. But he cited creation, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. Now, Ashna, do you remember any other passages in the Bible where God refers to creation principle again? When he, is this matter? All right, maybe anyone, put up your hand. Which book? Very good. First Corinthians, let's turn to First Corinthians chapter 11. 
right? First Corinthians chapter 11. All right, First Corinthians um, chapter 11. Now, let us read from verses 1, all right, verses 1 um, to, to 10, verses 1 to 10 reading. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head covered, uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if be ashamed for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, indeed, for as much as he is the image of the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman have power over her head because of the angels. Now look at verse 10, when it comes to headship, for this cause. The reason why woman ought to have power means authority over her head, means she is to be under the authority of men. What is the reason? The reason is cited in verse 9. Uh, sorry, cited in verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. That is the reason. Creation. Now, so two reasons. All right, maybe I move uh, next. Any other reasons? Say again. Excellent, all right. Okay, maybe some of you didn't hear at the back. Matthew. What are the principle? We just read it in this passage. Say again. Creation. We just cited creation. All right. There's a third one. What is it? Uh, maybe um, K, uh, Cornelius. Say again. Headship about in where? Uh, we are talking about headship, correct. But what is the principle? Is it cultural, simply cultural, temporal, that's all? Or is it something that, is, that, is on, that, is, um, that God draws all the way back? So one is creation. The principle is not cultural because God talks about creation, right? right? So what else? Look at this passage. What else? Because this is something that today, that is heavily debated today. It's just cultural. So churches say, go ahead, have women pastors, women elders. It's just cultural. So you must have very clear convictions in your heart. All right, JB. Uh, is it to do with like a functional hierarchy? Functional hierarchy where? Uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 3. Verse 3, all right. Let's, uh, okay, functional hierarchy. But yeah, let's read verse 3 together. But I would have you to know that the head of the, every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Now, there is the Trinity principle, all right? The Trinity principle. Even within, all right, the Trinity, there is a hierarchy, all right? So, so what Cornelius, uh, what um, um, JB mentioned is correct. Even within the Trinity, there is a hierarchy. There is a hierarchy. There is headship. All right, and then after after that, God talk about who is supposed to be the head, the man. All right, in the case of mankind, is the man. In the Trinity, there is headship also. So it has to do with functional hierarchy. There are the roles. All right. So is the Trinity cultural? No, the Trinity is is eternal. All right. So these are eternal principles of headship, and who is the head? The man, based on creation, that's how God wanted men to know. But the other important thing to realize is, please, men, do not think that you are superior. All right? You are not superior. Is Christ superior to the Father? Or the Father superior to Christ? No. All right? Headship has nothing to do with that. It's simply God's functional hierarchy, God's roles that, is, that are given. All right? So women do not take it as, are you saying that we are inferior? We can't do the things that men can do? Don't go down that road. It's simply what God ordained, what God designed, all right? God is not saying women are inferior. Christ died for women as He, Christ, as he died for men. 
right? So there are roles that God assigned. It's a role, function. That is all, right? So please um, do not get be do not get swept away by, especially in your age, this um, strong emphasis of equality, right? Well, in many things, God talks about equality, but when it comes to dysfunctional role within the church, God has hierarchy, all right? Has hierarchy. Okay, so with that established now, let's continue tonight. Let's look at your question sheet. Now, the title is, what if there are no suitable men for pastor and elder roles? What if there are no suitable men for the pastor and elder roles? Because it's also common. All right, I think some of you are also getting very hot. I'm, I'm actually perspiring. Can someone please turn this off? <laughs> All right, I'm glad you feel hot as well. I was afraid you're cold, so I'm bearing the heat. Now, so what, what, what should we do? Look at question number one. Now, let's talk about teaching first and foremost, right, before we go there. Now, so does it mean women should never teach in the church? Women should never teach in the church. Is that what the Bible teaches? All right, so now we continue. Uh, we stop at, okay, um, uh, next, right? Does it mean that women must never teach in the church, Ryan? No. Not allowed to teach at all? No. No. Why do you say that? Because teaching, remember, teaching is authoritative. Teachers are authorities. Teaching by itself is authority, all right? Exercising authority. So, women should not have authority, right? So, but you say that women can teach. So, you're saying women can have authority. Why do you say women can teach? Uh, I can't really think of any biblical... Can't think of biblical principles, Ryan's principles. Right, but maybe like because um, like over children that might be different. Over children that might be different? Is it true? Alright, maybe we move on. Noah, what do you think? Can women teach in the church? I was going to say it's going to start Sunday schools, so I think they're not, they're not thinking that. All right, in Sunday schools, well, for a fact, we have female Sunday school teachers. But is it all levels? Is it all levels? All right, so that's the next question, right? Is it all levels? All right, now let's turn. Um, now, first and foremost, the Bible does talk about women teaching women. So, when it comes to women teaching women, it's clear. Let's turn to... So all these verses, please take them down in your Bibles and, and be clear about them, all right? Titus chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, verses 3 to 5, all right? Are you there? If you're there, let's read together. Titus chapter 2, verses 3 to 5, reading. The aged women, likewise, that they may be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now here, look at verse 3, that the aged women, so there are women, are to be teachers of good things. So here we have the Bible. Now, Titus, the book, the, this epistle is the Apostle Paul writing to the pastor Titus and telling Titus, this is how church must be run. This is what church must do, all right? So one of the things that Titus, the pastor, was told that make sure that the women are teachers of good things. But look at who are they to teach. Look at verse 4. That they may teach the young women. All right, so in the Bible, it's clear. Women teaching women is actually told, is actually taught in the Bible. So women teaching by women is in the Bible. That is not a problem, all right? And in, in fact, the women are to teach um, other women um, their roles. So if you look at um, the verses, their roles, verse 5, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed, all right? So, you do not see women stirring up other women. Women teach uh, women to, look at verse 5, to submit, to be, sorry, to be obedient to their own husbands, means to submit to their male headship at home. So, they don't say, no, we should be equal. Do not have this idea that, that your husband is head over you. Even in the home, they are to teach that. Now, in fact, if they don't, if, if they teach otherwise, 
or, or rather by teaching this, it is to ensure the word of God. Now look at verse 5. The word of God be not blasphemed. When women began to write, for example, in many of the blog sites, all right, they encourage other women to rise up in church. No, you must not accept this concept that, that um, you, you should be submissive to your own husband and your husband is head over you. These are old, olden days ideas. All right? It's not relevant anymore. Anyone who teach otherwise, the Bible says, you cause the word of God to be blasphemed. Right? So this is a very serious thing. But yet you see very common, commonly on blog sites, women claim to be teachers, and then they even claim to be pastors and so on. And then they write, write articles against right? male headship in the church, male headship in the home. They write against it. But here God says exactly the opposite. Right? These are people that are teaching, are causing the word of God to be blasphemed. The word of God to be blasphemed means this. Maybe I ask you, what do you think it means? The word cause the word of God to be blasphemed, uh, Justin. What does it mean, cause the word of God to be blasphemed? It means like to treat the word of God as an answer and not God. Right, treat the word of God like nothing. Like God is not important. Or right? misrepresent God. Paint the wrong picture of God. Cause the word of God to be blasphemed. Means to say, what God says is not true. It's not to be followed. All right? So those who say, well, no, um, um, wives should not submit to their own husbands, be obedient to husbands. No, it is not true. So they cause the word of God to be blasphemed. So maybe you in school over a long time have been groomed by the world to constantly think that, oh, no, you should not submit to your own husbands. You should not have the idea that, that, that the church um, or any, any part of society should be a case where, well, women are not equal to men to become, to play the same roles as men, even in the society of the church. Well, if you have grown up in that thinking, now you have to accept and embrace the Word of God, all right? This is what God says. All right, so back to this. Women can teach women. It's very clear. Now, so Ryan, you say women can teach men. Uh, women can teach children, all right? Where is that found? Look at, let's turn to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. Now let's read together. When I call, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, reading. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and, my mo and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. So here is that 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 picture, all right, of of um, um, young Timothy from young, all right, from their childhood, being taught the faith, being taught the faith, um, the, the the unfeigned faith, the true faith. So here we have well, women, grandmother, mother teaching Timothy from a very young age, all right, from young age. So very often people say this is, well, a clear, a clear example of women teaching men. That is why all the while in church history, we have women teaching children. Now, but the thing is this, should we say that it's teach children, um, but it's children, right? So at what age should we stop, all right? Are we saying that as long as it's Sunday school, well, we have adult Sunday school as well. Does it mean they teach? Now, by and large, we go by the principle of um, those who have reached a certain age. Well, for, for the Jewish people, the age of accountability, where they, they, they have to um, go to the temple all right, and profess their faith themselves. Right? So, 11, 12. So, we do not say that um, we have women teaching every class in Sunday school. All right? so, so, that's another thing that we must remember. All right? They're not to teach children. Uh, young ones, young, young, young males that have now come to age, that would be considered as um, of age, all right? Now, last one, anything else, all right, anything else? Now, turn to Acts chapter 18, Acts chapter 18, Acts chapter 18, Acts, Acts chapter 18, all right, let's read verse 26, Acts chapter 18, verse 26. Acts chapter 18, verse 26, reading. 
And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Now, here we have this man, all right, who was speaking in the synagogue, preaching boldly, all right, um, zealously preaching the word of God. But Aquila and Priscilla, this husband and wife team, now they heard that, well, his doctrines were not very sound. Um, so we have here, what if someone asks you, well we, well, we have Priscilla here, well, expounding, right, expounding um, uh, the way of God more perfectly to a man, right? Here is a fully grown man, a preacher, in fact. Now, how do you explain that? Sorry, I forget your name. I've, I haven't been here for some time. Yes, Mark, right. Mark, yeah, Mark, 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 right, Mark. How would you, in your mind, think, is it then, does this justify that our women can actually expound, teach, even teach preachers? Um, well, for this one, this might be kind of wrong, but I think what seems to be happening here is that, like, someone is um, speaking the word of God wrongly or they misinterpret it. Mm -hmm. And so someone corrects it that was not necessarily teaching, it's just instilling, like, correct word of God, like educating them about what is actually meant by the Bible instead of teaching. Right. All right, there's a, there's a right thinking, right? This is not the church having a woman, right, taking a teaching role publicly um, and, and doing that. Now, now, please notice a few things. Now, first, it says, Aquila and Priscilla had heard. So, the Bible says, they took him unto them. All right? The Bible didn't say Priscilla went and publicly corrected this man. No, they took him. So it's a husband and wife. All right? She had the husband with him. All right? So it's not necessary that Priscilla was the one preaching and teaching um, and correcting. All right? So there is that idea of she went with the husband. All right? She would not say, I want to be the one. All right? She went with the husband. That's the first thing. Now, what's the second thing also? Look at here. It says, they took him unto them. So this was a private correction. Private. Number one, she made sure there was a man with him. In, the, in her case, the husband. All right? And the Bible didn't say Priscilla led it. And then it says, they took him, they took him basically, they took him aside. A private discussion. This was not teaching, not public teaching. Teaching is a public thing, all right? So this was a private one-on-one -on -one, or rather two-on-one -on -one situation. Okay, so this does not justify that women in church would stand up and teach men, all right? A private meeting with, and there was a man present also. Well, most likely it was um, Aquila that was doing the expounding and, and Eunice supporting. All right? If they're biblical, that was how they would have acted. So now we have in scriptures, in other words, we have to be clear. If someone says, oh, your church teaches that women cannot teach in the church. Now listen carefully. Women cannot teach in the church. What must you say? That is an incorrect understanding all right, of the church and the Bible. The church says women teach women. That is why we have, well, Mother's Fellowship, all right, where a woman teaches the woman. All right? We don't have... Um, husbands coming along and then well maybe I ask you if the husbands should we have uh, a fellowship where husbands and wives come together and we call it mother's fellowship and then woman teach no right that will be woman teaching having authority over men publicly all right so so we don't disagree that women can teach but it's to women to young children and well if there's a private personal conversation discussion correction together with another man, okay? So those are the things that we must be clear about. Is what we say is men, women should not teach men. Women should not have authority over men because teaching is authoritative. All right, is it clear so far? Any questions? All right, any questions? Wait, questions? Oh no, yes. Um, regarding 2 Timothy 1.5, Mm -hmm. So is there, do we just apply that to me that, because like I guess that passage is, one could say it's just not um, women teaching children in their own family. Okay, so um, the question is, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5, verse 5, well, 
would it be that God is only sanctioning, God is only permitting that grandmothers and mothers teach their own children, their male children, and should this be carried on to the church, right? That's a question. Now, I think by and large, people acknowledge um, that anyway, when the children are, are children, they, they are not men. It's about men, women having authority over men, right? Adults, men, right? So, by and large, if children, they are not considered, well, authority over adult men, and that with this principle here also, they say, well, there's also a support that allows that. But if there's no evidence of, well, even children, all right, um, who are not men yet, there's no, no evidence of, of, of quotation that women teach children who are not adult men yet, then, well, maybe, yes, the church may argue, may, may, over time, may have a different view, all right? So, by and large, it's about adult men. And here, it helps to support that idea, all right? Authority over men, okay? All right, thanks for the question. Now, so that's all? You, you were discussing any, anything? It's good to clarify now. Yes, don't, don't feel shy. Yes. Um, so does this principle only apply in church, meaning that um, it doesn't apply outside of church, for example, in FEBC? Okay, so does it mean that it should, this principle apply only in the church? And it doesn't apply, well, for sure, it doesn't apply in your school. This is not secular. God talks about the church. All right, God talks about the church within Christianity, okay, and the home, these two. Now, what about FEBC, Far Eastern Bible College, those of you who are not familiar? Now, maybe I quote, well, my experience when I was there. There are courses, all right, that, that is very clear. Um, for example, like um, um, homiletics, all right, that is where we are trained to preach, all right, to preach and to teach. Now, in those lessons, it's very clear that when the, the men, the full-time called men, in that class, we have to come up and we have to preach a sermon, all right? We will go up to the pulpit and we will preach, all right? But when it comes to the women, all right, the women, they do not go up to the pulpit, all right? So, Reverend Quack, we're very sure they are teachers, they are not preachers, all right? They don't, they are not there to preach a sermon, they are there to teach, Right, to teach. So they would, they would stand um, in front of a table and they would teach like a teacher. Right? They would teach like a teacher. Right? So, so the Bible College uh, and, um, uh, for that class, make sure they, they understand. And when, when they teach, in their mind, they are teaching children. Right? So they are told very clearly, when you come up and teach as a, as a woman, you are not preaching to men, you are not teaching men. We are training you to teach, like the Bible allows you to teach women, we are training you to teach women. We are training you to teach um, children, um, that is what they're trained to do. So they don't go up there and start to treat like as if they're teaching men, that kind of thing, all right? So those things are made clear to them, all right? Then we also have, well, female teachers in the Bible college. And then you have, they fully grown, like I'm a fully grown, I was 50 over years old, all right? I attend the class and there is a woman teaching in FEBC, all right? Now, so when it comes to, to teaching, now, there are things like, well, you're teaching out of authority, spiritual authority. That is what God does not allow, spiritual authority, okay? So, there are some classes, for example, one of it is report, um, theological report writing, all right? These are teaching facts, not teaching spiritual um, 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 growth, that kind of thing. So, like, how, how do you quote when you write something? How do you cite um, materials? All right, this is quoted from where, comma, and all that kind of things, right? How, like in report writing, what are the principles, how you section your, your reports, that kind of thing. So, teaching factual things, not having spiritual authority over men, all right? So, so those are things like that. So, at least when I was there, these are things that are very clear, all right? And some are teaching like English. So, the, uh, we have people coming from um, countries where English is not their first language, all right? So, they need to learn English. Right, in order to be able to, to um, read theological materials in English, right? So, um, there will be English teachers, right? And at the time, the English teacher was also a woman. They teach English. They're not standing up as um, teachers of the word, having spiritual authority over the, call, the men who are called, all right? So, even whenever it's being taught, the principle is even if you are a woman, teaching factual things, sharing factual things, 
right? You must always remember, I must do, not do it as if, no, I want, to, I want to teach the men in this class spiritual things, kind of, kind of thing. That then becomes usurping authority. You, you, I want to rise up to have spiritual authority over the men in the class, all right? The adults in the class, all right? So does that answer your question? So by and large, they're asked to teach subjects um, that are factual, um, um, not having spiritual authority, and well, they should, if they're, even if they're teaching, like I think now there's a course on women of the Bible, right? I mean, the Bible or something like that. Um, it should not be taught in a way like, because there are men in there, it should not be taught in a way like, um, well, if the men want to learn, it's fine, right? The men want to attend that course, want to take that course, it's fine. But, but it should not be, the teacher should not teach it in a way like, oh, the men in class, are, no, you should not, that kind of thing, all right? Then it becomes one thing to usurp authority in the way they teach, um, even in things where they're allowed to teach, okay? Um, let, let me see anything else. Yeah, so you have to be very clear. So even if you're taking courses like that, in your heart, you must be clear about the principles. Don't misinterpret things, or if something is not correct, it doesn't mean that then, oh, it justifies you wanting to usurp authority and be like a, 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 a teacher of men as well, okay? Does that answer your question? Yes, all right. So, yes, and I hope and we must pray that the Bible College continues to, to, to make sure it is clear and it is sound and, and people understand what is happening, okay? Yeah, so, yes, we should not be... So, if you're taking a class um, taught by a woman, right, um, the girls do not take the class thinking, oh, I want to learn how to, how to now begin to teach men and to have... Um, to be a spiritual leader over the men, that kind of thing, all right? So learn with a carefulness, okay? All right, thanks for the question. Any, anyone else follow up? No? All right, yeah, so I noticed that there were some questions for there, but good question, thank you. Now, so now we go to question number two, all right, question number two. Question number two. Well, if you think that is something that is, you're uncomfortable with, well, raise it to your, to your parents at home. Right? If you feel that, oh, this is something that I'm comfortable, raise it to your parents um, so that they can, they can guide you. Now, question number two. Now, what if a woman organizes better, knows the church better, speaks better, um, able to teach better, in other words, nicer to speak with, all right, more caring? Now, with all these qualities, and, and the woman is better than the man in the church, is it not better for the sake of the church and the congregation to appoint her as the pastor or the ruling teacher? Now, this is a very common um, um, thinking, all right? Sometimes you ask your, um, I ask a friend, oh, your church has a female pastor or female elder. They say, why is it so? They say, oh, you know, they are, the, the women, they are, so much, they are so much more caring, more sensitive, um, more... More, uh, more discerning, um, and oh, they, are, they are so easy to talk with, and they speak better than men, they teach better than men, they organize better, all right? They're so diligent. Well, you know, they, they definitely do a better job than appointing a man, the man in the church, for, as a pastor or a ruling elder. Now, how would you respond? How would you respond? Where are we at? Um, all right, moving to the back, all right. Um, over here, all right, we have Caleb. How would you respond? You understand the question? All right. How would you respond? We still don't. Okay. So your answer is we still don't. All right. You get a bit of discount because you're still recovering. All right. So I won't ask you further. All right. Next. Next. Then um, Grace. So Caleb said, "No, we should still not." All right. So Grace, you are better than all the men. One day. All right. Then Caleb said, "No, we should still not upon you, Grace." Why do you think so? Do you agree? You don't agree. Oh, you agree. Don't agree. You're confusing me. You agree or don't agree? You should not be appointed as pastor or elder. No. All right. May I ask your sister why? Say, sister, be pastor. Then, you know, we can. Why? God has made it explicit. All right. God has made it explicit. Explicitly clear, as we read in, in uh, 1 Timothy that the woman should not usurp authority over the men. The woman should not have authority over men, spiritual authority. Pastors and elders, by their title, are spiritual authorities. God is explicit about it. God has made it explicit. Then let's just follow. Let's just follow. Now, do you know of this term, situational ethics? 
Situational ethics. Situational ethics means based, based on the situation, what is ethically the best? All right? What works the best? What's the best for people? Well, that, that, then go by that. So the Christian must never go by situational ethics. All right? We simply go by the Word of God. Now, but maybe someone challenges you further. Why? Why must we be like that? We must be practical. All right, so now I come to um, um, Isaac. Isaac. So we said, why Isaac? Why? We must be practical people. All right, we must be practical people. So how are you going to answer? All right, so far the answer is, well, God has made it explicit. It should not be. But see, but you know in some cases, where it definitely brings better results. People are happier. Shouldn't we do that? How are you going to answer? So I'm trying to build... Make you think, all right? I'm not doing this for fun and to, to kill time. Make you think. All right, maybe Matthew. Um, it's not that to please people. All right, it's not to please people. Why should we not? All right? Um, because they come to church because of? Oh, they come to church simply because the women, they, they like the woman pastor better than the men, because more caring. I feel more cared for. All right, now let's turn to Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. Now, why must we just simply uh, just take what God says? Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Colossians chapter 1, um, verse 18. Let's read together. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Now, here it is talking about Christ. Who is the head of the body? The body refers to the church. Christ. Christ is the head of the church. And if Christ is the head of the church, then in all things he must have preeminence. Preeminence means he is absolute supreme authority and everything is going to be about him. All right? Totally, uh, whatever he says goes, preeminent. All right? So the Bible tells us Christ is the head of the church. Then what the head of the church says, which he has made explicit, right? So thanks um, 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 for using the word explicit. He has made it explicit. The head of church has made it explicit that women must not have authority, spiritual authority over men. Then he must have the preeminence. He has the say. He has the last, first and last say. All right? So why must we simply do it? Because the head of the church said so. That's all. Right? So um, that is how the Christian should think in the church. Now, yeah, practically, you very often, sometimes you speak to these people, ah, oh, you know, if we appointed that man, oh, the church will be in a mess. Um, um, he's not good at organizing and, and so on and so on. All right? Well, it still goes that God says, use the man. Now, maybe i ask you this. Um, when you follow God's will, all right, maybe i ask, um, all right, ask next, all right? Now, Julius, when you follow, you simply obey God's word, what do you think will happen? Good things or bad things? Good things. Now, but if you follow God's word, but from what you see, ah, uh, this won't work, that won't work. Should you still follow God's word? All right, maybe i ask next then, Jedida. When you say, oh, but you know, if we if pointed the woman, things will work better. Um, oh, but if once you appoint the man, I think uh, it, it won't turn out well. All right? It's proven not as good an organizer. God's church will be kind of messy. All right, Jedida, if someone says that to you, whispers that to you, right? how will you answer the person? Don't whisper into my ears, I don't like it. How will you answer the person? Very good, all right? We should trust in God that He will work things out. He will provide and, he, and things will work out because we follow what He said, all right? Now, that's the same principle that we apply in our personality. We apply it in church as well. We must have faith. When you follow God, God will work things out, all right? You do not know how God will work things out. Well, this church is a good example. When we start to make these changes, 
some of the women felt that, oh, the fellowship um, activities is all going to be a mess, right? It took time. Well, the, the, the men appointed, they learned. And then over time, well, things went well, right? Now maybe I ask the next person, why is it that sometimes you think, well, it is a fact that the women are doing a better job than the men. Why do you think so? That, 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 right. I know the question is a bit cryptic. You, you say in, in church, but you know, you see all the women serving, things are going very well, right? So, you know, actually women are better organizers. Maybe we should leave it as that, let them be the elder, let them be the pastor. But the question is, is why do you think the woman seems to know more and do better than the men? Why do you think it's the case? Why the fact is the women were also doing better in church than the men? Because God gave them the gift, but it's not for teaching. Okay, so maybe, yeah, I mean, good answer. God did give them the gift to do something, but it's not meant to be an authority, authoritative role. So yes, I think that's a good answer. They do have a certain gift. But, but why do you think is that when the church is always run by women, they do better than the men? Next. Now, the answer is this. Now, if you always have someone doing something, do you think, and someone else not doing something, do you think the person who has always been doing something will know that some things better than the person who has not been given the chance to do those things? Right? Now, sometimes we can keep thinking, oh, it's going to be a mess, it's going to be a mess. Trust God, believe in God. You follow God's model. God gives the gifts. Just like God gives the gift to the woman, right? Like rightly pointed out, the woman should say, I have the gift, but I should not. The men should step up. When the men step up, as they begin to do, they will know. Actually, do you learn that at home? The parents, you keep saying, Mommy, help me with this. Daddy, help me with this. After some time, you got to learn this to do, learn to do this yourself. Right? I got to stop doing this. And when you start doing it, you can do it, right? All right, so that's a side point to mention. Now, now furthermore, let's turn to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, quickly, Proverbs chapter 3. Now, here are the things we must have faith in. We must not succumb to fear, right? Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Now, shall we read verses 5 to 8? Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 8, reading. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Now here, we often quote this, but now when you think and you apply this to church, God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. If God says this, trust Him. You think that things will go wrong, but just trust that when you obey God, well, He will work. Now, next one, look at, look at what it says. Lean not into thine own understanding. All right? Be not wise in your own eyes. So, my own understanding is this. The women are better. That's my own understanding. But God says, please don't depend on what you see. All right? Be not wise in thine own eyes. Don't take what you see and you begin to think, oh, I think this will work better than what God says. God says, don't. Now, when you do that, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. All right? It is good for you, spiritually, even physically. All right? It won't be a chaos. All right? So here are some principles. Now, question number two, the main point is this, Christian. All right? The main point is this. It may really look the way that it is better to appoint a woman to be a pastor or elder. But just remember, God, Christ is the head of the church. He must have the preeminence. Number two, we must trust in God. Right? Have faith that when we obey Him, He will work things out. We must take that step of faith. Or not, you will keep going on and on and on, just year after year after year. Say, so, uh, things, uh, you know, maybe we deal with it later. God will not help you if you keep going on in disobedience. All right, now, in fact, remember, now, you know, remember the word, um, but I suffer not the woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. Now, listen carefully. This word, usurp authority, usurp authority. What is it? What does it mean? Now, this word, 
literally means this, to take upon yourself the authority to decide. All right? To think that this is wiser and then you do it. That is what it, it means. To usurp authority is literally to, to make up your own idea and do what you think is good. Usurp. Usurp authority. All right? So God says, lean not unto thine own understanding, be not wise in thine own eyes. All right? Don't think that um, your ideas are better than God's. All right? Now, next. Um, question number three. Question number three. Alright, so question number two, let's have faith. Okay, maybe you're still not getting it. Maybe one day I die. Alright? I won't say maybe, one day I will die. Right? One day I will not be around. One day I will die. And then if the church, and then you, you're, 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 you've grown up, all right? you're now the, um, in church serving or um, a member and you have the right to vote, and the church begins to want to do things that are wrong, appoint a female pastor, appoint um, uh, women elders, and decide all this reason. Now you must remember all this that you learn. I'm spending time teaching you all more than the region people downstairs, all right? They've gone through much of this, but you need to know at your age, because you are the next generation, and if you support and say yes, 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 and all that, in fact, the worst is this, you begin to be the voice that say, you know, you want to appoint so and so, uh, ah, it's, it's going to fail. You see, this woman, this, 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 uh, this woman, she is so much better. You must be the last person to even ever think of such things, all right? All right, so that's why we're teaching you this now. Question number three. All right, so now this is another popular um, reason, right, besides those you've cited so far. Now, what if there were no suitable men in certain situations? What if there were no suitable men? Okay, I'll give you an example of no suitable men in certain situations. A situation where maybe um, a small church just got started. Right? A small church just got started. And then um, the, the pastor that was used to start the church, so he started the church, he died of a heart attack. Right? Right? Then suddenly there's no pastor. Right? And then the elder suddenly have cancer. Right? And he is, um, he is late in bed. All right? uh, Abigail looked very stressed. It's, oh, this is a terrible situation. All right? Her face was, oh. All right, so, so then, the, then the elder cannot um, serve as well. And then suddenly, that small church is in that situation. And then the men in the church are, are very new converts. Right? New converts, just one, two months old converts. Very young. Um, but there needs to be leaders. There needs to be teachers of the word. Now, and then in that situation, all right, so pretend one of you, one of you girls, you've grown up and you've been studying the Word, and then you're very mature, you know the Word of God very well. Now, so in that situation, should we, you know, what should we do? So I painted you the picture already. What should we do? All right, Jesse, what should we do? All right, so Jesse, you're the, you're the mature, godly woman at the time. And right, now all these are little, young, immature, new Christians, all right? Okay, so someone said, Jesse, you be the one. They say, no, no, we must follow God's will. So your answer is biblically sound, correct, absolutely correct, okay? They say, but Jesse, then tell us what to do. Uh, just, pray God will find someone. just pray, God will find someone. So they said, okay, good advice. So they all prayed, right, fast and prayed. They say, Jesse, we've been praying for about a month already, right? And six months already, all right? Then they, they say, oh, Jesse, do I have the answer? They turn to faith. Faith, you're the sister. What should we do? Oh, you keep doing it. <laughs> right, but you keep doing it already. Now, what should we do? What, ladies, what should we do? Jennifer. Wait, I moved here to ask them. Ah, ladies, I haven't reached yet. Uh, Phoebe, what should we do? Don't ask me. <laughs> now, turn. Oh, you can't turn, all right? Now, our constitution... Um, anticipates this kind of, These are common things that happen. Now, I read to you our constitution, right? You can't flip there because you don't have the constitution. With constitution um, uh, point, uh, uh, 12.2, 12.2, the church which has no pastor and or elder of its own may co-opt a pastor and or elder from another Bible Presbyterian church who shall have all the rights and powers in the affairs of the church. All right? So, here is the answer. 
Now, one of the solution is, is actually, and most churches do this, all right? They co-opt. Co-opt co means they approach another pastor, another elder, and say, can you also, all right, stand in and be the pastor of our church and be the elder of our church, all right? So most constitution, even our church constitution, it allows the pastor and the elder to actually stand as a pastor and an elder in another church as well, right, to help, right? So that is the option, right? I'm not for a moment saying what um, Jesse and Faith say is incorrect, right? Now, even in that situation where you want to co-opt, you must pray, you must trust God. You must not do that which is disobedient to God. Just keep trusting and keep praying and keep finding and keep approaching, all right? So the answer is correct. But they say, but, but Faith, still no one is responding. Then your answer is, Keep praying. Let's keep praying. Let's not do anything that is sinful. Let's trust God and God will work things out, right? So, the first thing is not to say, well, you know, since we don't have, let's just do this, all right? Now, we must exhaust everything that we can do to keep the model, to keep the model, all right? Now, um, now but, but until then, all right, until then, all right, until then. So the first thing, exhaust everything, all right, exhaust everything, pray. You want to obey God, God will help you. But until God brings the person, now, um, should, all right, so now Veronica, should the, then they say, but until then, all right, we are all immature, we, we don't know what to do, all right, we, we really need a lot of help, all right. Veronica, can you just stand in and just do, um, can you lead the church during this time? What would you say? No. No. Why no? Because it's God's word. Well, now, you can say, well, you know, there's no one else. I agree. Now, I will help. But should it be a permanent thing? A temporary thing? And even when you're helping temporarily, Please don't call me pastor. Please don't call me elder. All right? I will stand in temporary to, to help, to, to guide and help, and it's temporary. All right? I want the church to get to the right model as soon as possible. Then I ask Gracia, Gracia, what is the proof that Gracia wants to really move this and, and not continue to be, well, the unofficial leader of the church? What would proof that you are really someone who do not want to continue and make this something permanent? Do you answer my question? Yeah. Very, very good. That when God does bring the person, all right, Grace here will quickly say, God has answered our prayers. Now please turn to this person. All right. I exit and I am out of the scene. I'm in church, but I don't come to me anymore very ready to relinquish anything that she's been helping in and hand it over to the leader, all right? Not let me keep some things for myself so that people will come to me still. No, she will give everything up. All this information, please take over now, all right? Temporary, not try to do things to delay, all right? You say, let me see. They ask me to call the person, I won't call, all right? Try to delay the thing, all right? So now, so the principle is exhaust everything. The, the principle is always co-opt, always co-opt. In the meantime, there must be some temporary things that needs to be done, but you should not be called the pastor, you should not be called the elder, all right? It's not in the Bible. You are just helping. Now, in fact, after this, we'll learn another principle. Actually, we have no time, right? Um, now, remember, I'll leave that for a teens Q&A question. Now, what about the case of, you know, Hulda? I actually, I, asked you, I did ask you this question, which I'll answer for Teens Q&A. Question um, number... Ah, actually, question number five. Now, Hulda and Deborah. Now, but God appointed Hulda, Hulda the prophetess, and Judge Deborah. What about those situations? All right? Wait, Ichung, have I answered this for Teens Q&A before? Uh, not for teens Q&A. Okay. All right, so we'll answer that teens Q&A. What about these women that got appointed? Now, let's come back to question number three. So, exhaust all points. So, I'm very glad, I'm very thankful for the answers that you give. 
at least we know that the church is building a generation that thinks biblically. But when the time comes, when the time comes, please make sure that you live biblically, all right? You live biblically. So maybe then, great sir, you may be grown up and then you find that you begin to enjoy the attention. You must still remember, I must follow the biblical principle, all right? All right? So Satan will tempt you. That's my point. Now, question number four. Question number... Well, well, before that, before that. Now I said, well, all the lessons are for women. What's the lesson for men? Okay, maybe to ask you. Abigail, what do you think is the lesson for men? The, um, the men, well, all the men are very weak in the church. And then the woman, while waiting for us to co-op, the women have to do a lot of um, things which actually the men should do. Now what's the lesson for the men? You answer my question? Very good, all right? Continue to study the Word of God, study hard, study as much as possible, study more and more than the women, so that you can grow and now begin to step up and help the church, all right? Now, I would say that very often in the church, the problem why mostly women are the leaders and not the men, sometimes it's because, well, the women, they want to usurp authority. It is also equally, I think, frequent that it's the men that are lazy, the men that would not step up to, to ensure that the model that God intended is in place. I don't want to study the Word of God. I don't want to serve any way the women are doing a good job. You know, uh, let them do it, all right? They won't step up to the model. Just like the woman must make sure that the model is correct, the men must step up to make sure that the model is correct. Right, so uh, Matthew, um, Isaac, uh, Julius, and uh, all of you here, you must make sure right, that you study the Word of God. And if God does want you one day, if you're a godly man and grows, continue to be godly, you cannot say, I do not want to. Let the woman do it. All right? So that is very often the other problem. In fact, it's the same problem at home. Why are very often men not the head of the homes? Well, in, in name and title they are, but they don't lead. All right? They are lazy, they are not spiritual, they don't care about spiritual things. Why? Because they say, ah, let, the, let my wife do it. She's doing a good job teaching the children the Bible, uh, bringing them to church, and, and doing all these things at home. I should let her do it. That's a problem, right? Men, so please know that as much as the woman must learn not to usurp authority, you must make sure that you fulfill your role if God calls you to authority. All right? Now, question number four. Now, what if after extended period, the men are still not growing? Now, maybe I ask you this. Churches that tell you, right? So maybe you, you have a friend who is in such a church where the, women, the pastor is a woman, um, the elder are women, all right? And there are some men. And then, and then they tell you, yeah, you, you know, our church, yeah, we want to. We want to, but it's been some time, but we still cannot find the right men. That's why, um, well, the woman continues to need to be the pastor and the elders. Do you answer my question? So your friend tell you this. All right, wait, next is you, right? Okay, your friend tell you, right? Your friend tell you, um, Ife, you know, you don't understand. We, we also want a male pastor, all right? But, but for many years already, um, the men are still quite weak, so we need this woman to continue, all right? How would you answer them? How would you help them to understand what should be right? What would you say? What would you say? You understand the question? Try something. Keep praying. Keep praying. Yeah, that's what we've been doing. We've been praying many years already. All right, so that's why they are, you know? They're still weak. What would you say? Well, how would you think? Okay, so one of the things that she said, if the men are truly safe, and they read God's word, and they grow, well, God will use them, right? So you blame the men, okay? Which can be true, right? It can be really a fact that the men don't want to step up, which is what I just spoke about. So don't, if there is such a church, men and your dad, do not fail, all right? But what else? Maybe I come to the woman, all right? How, what would you think? What would you say? You understand the question? Okay, say, you shouldn't disobey God's word. God's word is clear. 
right? They say, no, but, but we want to obey God's word. But at this stage, we still cannot. So we just keep asking the woman every year to be the pastor. I tell the men to step up. Well, the, the men are not... Actually, uh, the, the Bible study are not growing as well. What would you say? Huh? Just follow God's word. They say we want to. Now, maybe ask behind. Ah, uh. uh, yeah, next. Okay, first, you co-opt. So first thing you say, co-opt. Co-op. They say, yeah, but um, we don't like co-op or co-op doesn't work for us. What do you say? Um, last one, Jennifer. We should what? You should still do it. And yeah, yeah we, we want to, but, but can't yet. No. So let's have the main thing. <laughs> no, it's a <laughs> laughing thing. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. I think if co-opting is co the only option, then the have to go with it. Okay, you have to go with it, all right? So number one, they refuse to co-op, right? They refuse to do the right model and just find a man and bring him in. They, they still want, hopefully, somewhere inside the church, someone will come, all right? So you just have to co-op. That's one answer, all right? That's how you can solve the problem. But they say, uh, um, but we still want from within. But it's not happening. What will you say? Sometimes, like I guess, like if you are dilig if the church is truly diligent in trying to train up men to become pastors, then God would naturally bless those efforts as well if we trust in Him. So perhaps it's also a failure of the church that they have not been praying. Right. Them. Very good. So it could be that, that well, if the church is serious about, like Gracia says, I'm serious about getting the guys up. Once they're up, I will hand it over. If the church is serious, all right, they will stir the men to, to, to step up and train them, all right, train them. So it, that could be one of the problems. They don't really want to solve it. We're still very happy that this woman, we actually like this woman and we hope she continues, all right? It could be that. Or why not? Because somewhere in that disobedience, God is displeased. You know what? We, Christians should never say chicken and egg, right? Correct? Christians should never say chicken and egg. Because we always know, this is not a chicken and egg question. What's, what's the, what, what is the answer? Is it chicken first or egg first? Chicken first, right? But, but you know the idea, right? You know the idea? Well, this is, this is one problem that is causing another problem. Right? Now, if you are disobedient, and you want to continue having the woman be the pastor, or the women to be the elder, and you continue to want to disobey God, do you think God will help you? No, you already made up your mind. That is how you want church to be. So if it's an excuse. Now, why is it that when the teaching and teaching, then if the men are not growing, is it a problem with the teaching? All right? So some of these things, we must not sometimes be very soft-hearted and say, oh yeah, no, they're trying. So uh, they don't like co-op thing. Uh, you got to understand. No, many of you have the right understanding. No, you just have to do it. Co-op. If you don't to co-op, then you have to ask yourself, why is not God answering our prayers? Is it because somewhere in us, we don't really want to change? We think it's okay. Now, if a church who's raised with this is wrong, we want to change. God will help, all right? So, sometimes I say, oh, I ask my friends, you mean you still have a woman pastor? They say, yeah, but no choice, all these years is still like that, no men. Is it because God is chastising? All right, quickly, we have to finish this. Uh, question number five, I say I will answer in teens Q&A. Now, question number six, short one. Now, what if you're asked? What if you're asked? You answered that question already, all right? Both Gracia and uh, um, others, Jesse, have answered this question. Now, what if you're asked? Someone comes to you, hey, you know, why don't you step up? Now, then you say, you think, well, if I don't step up, the other woman under consideration is, is worse, is bad. It's bad. This woman doesn't study the Word of God, but likes to talk a lot, right? Oh, she is a big, big um, CEO in the outside world. Well, she can organize very well. They say, well, you know, um, okay, you come to here, right? Wait, no more women here to ask. Come back to the women at the back. All right, Jedida, Jedida, you hey, know. Um, um, all right, start with, with you. Um, 
Why did the person say? But if you don't stand, then okay lah. Then we ask the other girl, the other lady. But you know the other lady is unspiritual, talk a lot, um, very worldly. They say, then your heart begins to tell you, ah, then maybe I should step up. Should you step up? No, <laughs> your sister went no faster than you. No, I don't want my sister to do that. Well, why no? The church will go all wrong, you know. Say again. Without, with or without? Uh, without asking a quote. And they, they don't want to quote. They don't want to quote. All right? they, they, they just want to have it from inside. And they say, you're the best. If not you, then we're going to ask the other lady. And you know the other lady is going to mess up the church. Would you do it? You still won't. You don't love God's church. Why would you not? The issue is first and foremost, they don't want to ask. But the problem is they don't want to ask and they don't go appoint someone else than you, you know. And the person is going to damage the church. You should love the church and step up, right? So you just say it's wrong. Maybe I ask Jedida. Jedida, would you? Is either you, Jedida, or some worldly, carnal woman? Jedida, don't you love God's church? And step up to help? Very good. I love God's church. That is why I intend to obey His command. Disobeying commands, all right, is only going to bring God's chastisement, correct? And if I love God's church, then I will not do it. Now remember, two wrongs don't make one right. Don't in your heart begin to think, you know, I must love God's church. So I must step up, I must, I must take, if I don't, someone else will, and it's, the person is going to mess up the church. Now when you actually say, okay, then I'll be the pastor, I'll be the elder, all right? Even if you say it's temporary, you know that you're still committing something that is sinful against God's model, all right? It is still not right. You be the last one to commit that sin. Now, if they want to commit the sin, they are accountable to God, but don't let you be the one accountable to God. Now, all of a sudden, they found a solution, a wrong solution, you, right? You just provided them a solution, which is a wrong solution by stepping up. You should press for co-opting. Now, if they don't want any appoint, because of your obedience, all right? Now, do you think because of your obedience, all right, says so the other one, because of your obedience, do you think God will be pleased and then God will step in to help? Because he said, no, I must obey God. I must trust God, all right? And I must say, no, I will not, I will not take this role. So you obey God, right? Do you think God will be pleased? God will be pleased with, the, with, with your choice, with your choice not to step up. Sorry, my question was not clear. Yeah. Yes. And when God is pleased, do you think God will step in to help? I mean, it's up to Him. It's up to Him. All right? It's up to Him. Yes, He may or He may test the church further. All right? Good answer. It's up to Him. But all I know is, if I obey God, then, well, perchance, God being pleased, He will say, good, then now I will step in. But if I step up and I do the wrong thing and I sin, God will definitely be displeased. God will definitely not step in to help, correct? All right, so be clear. Those things may happen one day, all right? Um, or you may, uh, one day maybe, um, have to be in another BB church somewhere else and some things like that happen. You must know, all right, how to think and behave biblically. All right, so please know that. Uh, so I ask you, should you try to save the church by stepping up? All right, next. Should you try to save the church? So what do you think? You save the church by stepping up. Who saves the church? God. All right, you must always know. When we obey God, it may be just you obeying God. It is God that saves the church. You must never think, I do something sinful to save the church. We, do, we are not called to be martyred to save the church by doing something sinful. I always remember that. Okay. Um, last question. Okay, last questions. Five minutes and we finish this lesson. Now, 
Who chooses and appoints pastors and ruling elders into the church office? Who chooses? Uh, I don't know where I, I start. I just start all over again. All right, maybe since I'm done here. Uh, okay, next, JB. Who chooses pastors and elders for the church? Wow. <laughs> Couldn't trick you, right? Because we'll say, oh, the, the people, will, the, the BOE chooses, the board of elders chooses, the, and then the people votes. Now, let's turn to Acts 20. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Verse 28. Acts chapter 20. Verse um, 28. Now, 1-2 reading. Take heed. Therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now, here is the Apostle Paul telling the pastors and elders that he gathered before him, before he left, all right, at the harbor, and he said, please take heed. Now, take care of the flock, which the Bible tells us, and the Apostle Paul is very clear. The Holy Ghost made you overseers, bishops, to feed the church of God. So, the Christian must always know, it is God that chooses, God that appoints. Okay? Now, that is the easy part. Then I ask Cornelius. So, uh, Cornelius, then we all sit and wait. Alright, let's make a appointment for the Holy Ghost to turn up tonight. So, we waited and waited. The Holy Ghost didn't turn up. All right, we call for a meeting to appoint pastor and elder. The Holy Ghost didn't turn up. So what does it mean, God appoints? What should we do? All right, so we pray and pray. We pray for one year and we're still waiting for the Holy Ghost to come and appoint. Excellent answer. All right, what does it mean? We must act on biblical principles. All right, now... The church is to follow God's principle. When we follow God's principle, God has already chosen a man, God has already chosen um, the person. But the person that God chooses will always fulfill God's principles and God's criteria in the Bible. Now, if you say that the Holy Ghost appoint, and you go and appoint men and elders, pastors and elders who do not follow the principles in the Bible, then can you say it's the Holy Ghost that appointed? Who appointed you? Right? You appoint based on, hey, this is my relative. This is my best friend. Right? I like this person. No biblical principles involved. Then you cannot say it's the Holy Ghost that appointed. It's you appointing based on your criteria. All right? So when, when, when we say the Holy Ghost appointment, God has a man. God has chosen. And we make sure that, we've, we make sure that the man is who God chose us. Who God has chosen. And how to do that? Make sure that we put the person against the, against the criteria in the Bible. Where are the criteria found? Next person, Justin. Verse, Titus, 2, Titus, Titus chapter 2 and 1 Timothy chapter 3. Alright? Unless you got the books right. So 1 Timothy chapter 3, Titus chapter 2 have all the criteria of pastors and elders and deacons also. So if you say it is God that appoints, then make sure, all right, the people that you are thinking about that God leads you to, and you have to now decide, always fulfill this principle. All right, so that is what it means um, when God appoints and the church acts accordingly um, through prayer and so on, right, is to use the criteria. Now, is that all? Is that all that you should do? Now, what if there are a few a few, all right? A few elder, a few potential, and they all meet the of a few persons, but they are only going to appoint one, all right? Then how do you decide? You check the criteria and then all that. How do you decide next? Uh, next, you want to try, Mark? All right, very good, all right? So you, you said the word, test. Test, right? You outwardly you may say, "Well, all meet the criteria." Then there must be a testing period, right? An evaluation period. Then you test, test, test. 
then you'll begin to see. God will lead you, all right? You submit, you pray, you totally submitted to God, and then you put the people through the test. For example, um, Elder Leong that was appointed, right? He was first appointed as deacon. Before that, there was a period of observation, testing, then he became deacon. Then there's a period of testing, observation, right? Then you see the one, right? Same for the pastor also. They must go through examinations. They must go through testing. They, are come, to, they come to church. They serve for a period. There's all this evaluation and test, okay? So these are some of the things that we do. But we must always know it is God that chooses us, all right? Means you better use His criteria, okay? To do otherwise is to say you are choosing. So that is one thing that we learn. Now, the other thing that we learn, now, if it is God that chooses the man and God leads the church to appoint the pastor and appoint the elder, how should you respond? Now, we move to the back now. All right, Caleb. So now we know it's God that appoints the pastor and God appoints the elder. If the church has done all right, then you know these are the ones that God appointed. Then how should you respond to the pastor and the elder? You must submit. Why? Because they're appointed by God. They're appointed by God. All right? Now turn back to 1 Peter and then we close. Turn back to 1 Peter. Turn back to 1 Peter. Let's read verse 5 together. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Right? All right? That's enough, right? So we cover that. So why does the Bible say submit yourselves to the elder? Why? Because they are appointed by God. So submitting to the elder is submitting to God. Alright? Of course, you submit only where it is biblical. You don't, when the elders, uh, the pastor teach doctrinally erroneous things and ask you to do sinful things, you cannot submit. Okay? Now let us all turn to God. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts. Uh, what church dropouts say? Why they stop attending church? Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So, from